So, so when you, you talk about, did you guys, when you ran your campaign before, was it strictly on Google or did, or did you do Facebook as well? Not do Facebook. I've been testing my own Facebook ads and LinkedIn ads with not a whole lot of uh, results, desirable results. Um, and I've also kind of broken this down to both attract drivers, doing a digital campaign for attract drivers as well as customers. Now, I've found more success attracting drivers. Mm-hmm. How does your typical, so whenever you are sending traffic, are, are, are you sending them to your website or are you sending them to, you, you mentioned landing pages. What, what, what was on the landing pages? I'm, I'm curious to, to sort of dive into, to, I guess, what worked and, and maybe why it didn't work. Yeah, it's um, advertising. I, I can speak from experience that uh, it is a little bit of a, I don't want to say a little bit, it's definitely a, a tricky thing. And it's something that you really, I, I found more success in promoting educational content than, you know, trying to, to get, you know, RFQs or things like that. Was that the main goal of, of the landing page was to have somebody, you know, fill out a form, uh, request a, a quote? Um, you mentioned drivers, but I imagine that that one would would have would definitely have more success than than customers. So there could be a lot of variables. There are always a lot of variables I- I've discovered with advertising. Anything from the graphic that you choose to the end result that you want to the copy that you use. Um, it's it's really a science. And and from my experience, w- what I've seen is that you really have to have the educational side of content on your site first and and per ma- making sure that those leads are converting on the site first before you ever start advertising. Um, so are you guys currently, you know, producing any content to your site? Like I, I noticed it, it's, it's a, you know, for, for industry standard, like you guys have a, have a clean looking site. Um, but I don't, I don't see any, uh, blog articles. Is that accurate? So, yeah, that's correct. You know, uh, and- I kind of thought about it, but I just don't know what type of value you convert. And, you know, that's part of the reason why I wanted to have this conversation with you. I, obviously, I can't do it. I don't have enough time to do or dedicate this myself. So, you know, I wanted to talk to experts like you. And if you can provide an ROI for something like this, then we can move on to the next step. But I don't see what in the educational side of things. Yes, I understand that being a technique. But where are my customers hanging out? What type of information, learning tools are they searching for based on your experience? Well, in, in my experience, customers, especially shippers, aren't actively searching online. They just, they're, they're for lack of a better phrase, they're dealing with customers or, or potential carriers and partners that are beating down their door. So they don't necessarily have to go out there in order to do, you know, uh, go to Google and, and put in a keyword. So that's where it's a little bit trickier. Um, versus a driver, which a driver is is usually looking for better opportunities and they're going to Google. And so we have a little bit more data in order to suggest that that's a better angle to take, especially with your content and and uh, overall advertising strategy. Um, as far as like educational content, that is really more or less telling the stories of the customers that you already work with. So it's more or less like success stories and and then using that educational content in order to try to drive traffic and create awareness for your brand. Um, but then you're also running into a, a, a situation where you're spending a ton on ads. And a lot of times the, the, the attribution model is a little bit flawed where 
say, uh, you know, in some of the data that I'm seeing, people will look at the ad and then they will go to Google and search for your company instead of clicking on the ad itself. So uh, when you're doing like uh, budgeting for, you know, the, the next year, then what if that lead came through, you would attribute it to organic search and you would attribute it to Google. You wouldn't necessarily attribute it to the ad that's being viewed. So it's a little bit of, of, of a process of you really have to build the flow on your site first, then build up that educational content. And then from that perspective, you can start to see what channels are filtering a lot of your traffic and then ultimately what converts. Um, but in, in the short answer of things is that it all matters. Um, but if you're going to be spending money, you might, you want to focus on spending money on the things that are already working well on your site, if that makes sense. Right. I understand. So, you know, I guess that answers my my question for short term. Now we've got a lot of growing to do. And I think, you know, I was kind of comparing the trend in, you know, traditional marketing and, you know, digital. I wish, I wish our industry was easier to attract customers or potential customers digitally. So that way I wouldn't have to put all the resources in um, traditional marketing. But to me, it sounds like that's a way to go for shippers. Uh, but for the drivers, it would be completely different strategy. Yeah, I mean, w- with drivers, it's a little bit easier because drivers are naturally on their phones a lot more. They're using search engines. They have an amazing following on social media. And so it really helps with even like the word of mouth and not just, you know, social media advertising or, or, or just putting content out there. I think for shippers, what I what my clients have seen success with and what I, I've had success with is just putting informational resources on your site first and then from there building out what I like to call topic clusters. So using your your current customers as a really great starting point, that is a, a good place to go for for the shipper perspective. Because if a shipper is looking to do business with you, maybe, you know, you did some cold outreach to them and they're going to go to your website and they're going to look at your website. They want to see what specific use cases that you've solved in the past for similar customers just like them. Right. Um, and they honestly, they, they, they want to know you're legit. They want to know that you've been around for a little bit. And then they want to see, you know, they want to put a, a, a face to a name and they want to get to know you a little bit more. Because at the end of the day, you know, people do business with people. And even though you're reaching out to businesses, they, they still want to be able to relate to, to you in a, in a, a different way. And a, a lot of the times the, the easiest way to do that is by telling a, sor- a story that's similar to the company that's already checking out your site. So for this, I would I would probably say, uh, I mean, because everybody wants more leads, right? Especially this time of the year, like you're starting to think about, you know, 2021 and and getting how are you going to get more leads to the door and how are you going to start, you know, hit, hitting the ground running for for 2021, how are you currently uh, approaching new cus- or new potential customers? So here's my strategy. You know, we, uh, right now, we don't have a sales program or we don't have a sales team, but 2020 is really where I'm setting things off and trying to figure out which way we're going. But I was going to have a little so a couple of different options. Uh, lead generation through telephone calls um, just to get on the list for expedites, for example, and then we send out our, our quotes every expedite. Or, you know, get on the ultimate bid list for uh, your yearly project or programs or lanes or something like that. So, you know, basically lead generation for, you know, cold calling or something like that. Um, using up lead or, you know, sales navigator or what have you, and then funneling all that back to our fully uh, team and then going from there. But Are you I know doing... our friend, I was hoping that we could do more of a digital approach, but it sounds like we don't have the resources that it would take to put in an entire campaign. 
Well, I, I would honestly, I would start, if I was you, I would start out with, do, do you, I notice you have a YouTube link on, on your site. Is that something that you guys are publishing regularly to? Let me, I guess I can. Um, yes and no. I did, I did create, so that's, we have a lot of success with how uh, two videos with that, um, uh, for, you know, our owner operators and stuff like that. So I, I've gotten over 60,000. Uh, I just released the video a couple of weeks ago, um, but you know that's probably more so geared towards attracting drivers and owner operators. Yeah, I mean that, that that one video it has a tremendous amount of views, and you have a lot of subscribers too, especially in you know for a company branded page um, that that's fairly significant. So. I would also say, let's see, um, LinkedIn. How much stuff are you are you doing anything on LinkedIn at all? No, um, you know, personally, I, I, I'm not a fan of LinkedIn. <laughs> um, it's kind of cringy, but it, it works. <laughs> it's so cringy. God, it's so cringy. So I, I need to get over that personally, but I just can't stand hanging out there. <laughs> No, I, I get it. it. It's taken me, um, I, I didn't really start getting on LinkedIn until early. I, I mean, I've been on it, but I didn't, I, I'm not actively, I, I didn't start actively being a part of it until earlier this year. And it's taken me a while to refine my timeline and it's still a mess at times, but um, I think it is getting a little bit better, but that is where I primarily communicate with with other shippers, especially um, tech companies as well, which might not be a, you know, it could be, I guess, depending on the solution, it could be a good resource for you as well. Um, but also media entities is, it hang out there too. Um, so if I was you, I, I would definitely start thinking about internal content. And, and this is something that we can help you with. We can help you with crafting the strategy, um, editing it, um, even with like videos and podcasts and things like that. Um, we can definitely help out in that regard. Um, but it really is your strongest suit or, or your strongest right. selling point is if you're the one say on, you know, Monday morning before you do anything else you make a quick five minute video on, you know, where your trucks are going to be for this week or, or what you're focusing on, where you think the market is or the opportunities are at for this week. Um, creating like short, quick hitters that you can upload directly to YouTube and you can upload directly to LinkedIn. That will do wonders for you. Um, there's also some opportunities where if you create that content, we can set up a, a synchronization between that and your website. And then where anytime you upload a new video to YouTube, it automatically publishes to your website. So then that way, if somebody is checking out your content, either through YouTube's great like SEO advantage, they have a tremendous SEO advantage. They're the second largest search engine on the planet. So anytime you can upload something there that has, you know, maybe some targeted keywords in the title, um, that helps tremendously. And if a shipper or somebody who works for a shipper that you're possibly trying to target, if they see that video, they'll come to your website, they'll probably want to research you a little bit more. Um, and it, and it really could go a long way. It is an investment, um, but it is something that can get you some quick, I wouldn't say quick wins because there's really no telling how, how quick, you know, somebody would, you know, jump on to become a customer, but it's a really good investment that has a long-term effect instead of, you know, spending another five grand on advertising that don't work. Um, you know, going to trade shows that won't work, um, you know, virtually, you know, it, who knows when trade shows are even going to come back, you know, fully. Um, but if, if, if I'm you, I'm investing at, in, and it doesn't even really have to cost a lot of money. You can make it to where you create this content and you, it's a one clip video. It's one, you know, maybe a few minutes long, you're doing it direct to upload and then it syncs to your website. And so it adds that credibility factor, not just from social media, but also for your website too, for visitors who are coming to your site. Um, are you guys doing anything as far as like SEO is concerned? Um, no, not yet. Because, you know, I, I, I haven't in a 
whole lot of value in it because, you know, you take a look at even some of the big heavy hitters in our industry, they're not even doing any of that, you know, and, and when I take a look at that as an example, I'm thinking, okay, well, if they aren't doing it, chances are they're doing traditional marketing channels with traditional salespeople, and that's, that's the winning formula for that. You see what I mean? So, I just find this industry to be incredibly hard to extract customers online, but that's why I'm coming to you as the expert. Um, and, you know, what I, what I heard from you makes a lot of sense. Making the website the staple of, of everything you're doing now are just kind of weak. So. Well, it's not. Are you, are you on WordPress? Okay, so Wix might be a little bit of a challenge to synchronize with like YouTube and things like that. Um, we could, uh, so say if, if we were to work together, what I would recommend is that you switch to WordPress. WordPress is, um, they're, they're, they're the number one CMS, you know, in the world for a reason. You know, I know that some people have their gripes against WordPress, but from an update perspective, from integrating different technologies, um, it really is the most cost effective. Um, it also really helps out with your SEO. Um, do you, are you focused more locally or are you national? So locally, we want to, you know, I'm targeting Michigan manufacturers because that's the manufacturing program. That's where we're at. That's where we put our own assets on. But anything that goes outside of that, uh, we broker it out. So, uh, if that makes sense. You know, so most of our customer base are here in Michigan, but there's plenty of shippers here that do what we are best at that we're trying to attract. So, but we also do international shipping, all this type of stuff. But I found out that if we're trying to uh, reach out to for all of those services online, it's damn near impossible. If you know you're trying to be all to everybody, you right. end up being nothing to everybody. Or well. I, I will say, so if you're local and you're targeting Michigan manufacturers, you should absolutely invest in some local SEO, um, especially at the city level, at the state level. Um, that's where that's where you can take a lot of advantage of because if shippers are going to look for or even other brokerages are maybe looking for some last mile carriers or something within the state, that's what they're going to Google and that's what they're going to be searching for um, or they're searching it within their TMS, which is also an option. Um, so I would say definitely local SEO, um, just to do a one-time optimization. Um, and it can even be like within, and I'm not sure of Wix's backend on how they optimize for SEO. Um, but I know on WordPress, it's very easy to, to, to set that up. Um, and it's, then. It's super easy on my end. Um, uh, if I just had the right keywords or whatever, I'd, I'd just plug them in. Yeah, I mean, that, that's definitely something that I would I would put yourself in the mind of, of someone who is looking for your services. What would they Google? Would they do, uh, you know, last mile, you know, Michigan carriers or, or, or you know, Michigan 3PL? Um, so it, that's what I would I would think about first, because that's going to be your quickest win advantage. Um, and then the next step, I would say, is to start producing more content. Um, get out and content is, is really the easiest way to get in front of your prospective customers. And if they get a good feel for what you do, what you provide, I mean, it, it's not going to be something that you're going to get 20 leads from the very next day, but it is an investment that you could, that you could get that investment and you could start seeing that ROI, you know, within a few months. Um, and it also, a lot of this content is, is something that can really be evergreen and it can last for years. Um, and it really creates, right. it, it establishes that, that perspective that, you know, when you're adding those topic clusters to your website, um, those videos would be essential in adding, you know, th those, you know, what, what are the, I guess, the, you know, think about the common commodities that you haul or the, the common lanes that you run, um, having some informative videos on what to look out for and, and how you're different and how you, you really take care of your customer within, you know, those parameters. Having those different topic clusters on your website would go a long way. 
Um, and that's not necessarily from an SEO perspective, just from a content perspective. And once you start creating it and getting in the habit of it, then that creates a situation on, on your site where you can start creating those topic clusters based off of the content that you've already created. Yeah, I totally, totally understand. Uh, I just don't know if I'm the guy. I'm not the camera guy, you know what I mean? So. Well, if you have an iPhone, that's all you need. Uh, I mean, that, that's how that's how I first got started was just an iPhone and a little $20 microphone from Amazon. It does not take a lot to get started. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, with the maybe you've invested in some, you know, webcams and, and maybe some a desktop microphone, you know, for, for the virtual meetings and things like that. Um, so if, if you have that, that's great too, but you really only need an iPhone. Um, so you shoot it on the iPhone, directly upload it to LinkedIn, directly upload it to YouTube. And, you know, maybe there will be a situation where we could work out some, some integrations for you, um, in order to sync that content to your website and maybe help out with, with some of your, your local SEO, you know, make sure you have a really good footing starting out. Um, but that's something that we can definitely explore. Yeah. Um, but if, if you're looking okay. for, a... oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, definitely send, send me over, over the or something because I'd like to take a look at it. I'd like to see or try this again from a digital perspective. It's definitely, I mean, just, you know, as a heads up, you, you, you just, once you commit to, you know, create, I'm going to do a video a week of what I think, you know, uh, the, the industry is looking for this week, maybe, um, you know, some content brainstorming and things like that. Um, we can provide that guidance for you. We can always, uh, and also provide the, the editing for it too, but it really goes a long way. If you're the face of the company, that you're the one that's the, you know, the talent behind the camera that that's speaking to the company. Um, so that's something that we can definitely help with, you know, from a brainstorming perspective to a coaching perspective, even to, you know, editing and the distribution of that content. And, and, you know, you mentioned earlier that you don't necessarily have a lot of time to do it, but if you, once you start doing it, it becomes a, it becomes a habit. It becomes a lot quicker for you to get, you know, a, a five minute video out on, you know, every Monday morning. And then that there's different possibilities there that you can use those videos to email out to your current customer base, um, to your prospective customers. Um, so you can do some email marketing with that too. And, and some of this can be done from an automated perspective. I mean, for, for me, what I have set up on my site, I will record a YouTube video, I'll upload it to YouTube, and then it automatically syncs to my blog. And then I have it set up to where if I just program it just a little bit differently, it automatically emails out to my audience. Um, so that's another perspective that you could think about too, where it's, you're, you're, you're providing value, you're providing great content, but you're just removing some of the, the time consuming hurdles, if that makes sense. <laughs> well, it could just it, it could just change every single week. And, you know, what are you planning for for this week? Um, what do you expect to be running? Are, are you, you know, running in, in, in certain lanes for this week? Are you focusing on certain commodities? Um, is the weather going crazy? Uh, little things like that. You know, maybe it's maybe it's those stories to start out with. Or maybe it's a, a topic within the industry, you know, hours of service rules or something like that, that you, you, you want to vent on for a few minutes. Things like that um, can really give a, a perspective and, and give a face to the, a, a company's name. Um, but just doing it consistently is probably the biggest challenge um, and getting over that sort of um, fear of, of what does anybody really care what I have to say, you know, that that certain fear. But if you, you, I mean, you run a business, you, 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 you are an expert in your business. So use that knowledge and, and get it out to the world. Because right now there, there are not a lot of logistics companies doing this and they're doing it mainly because they don't, uh, they're either afraid to doing it or they're just stuck in their ways. Right. Yeah. It's still the old school, it's still the old school industry. I can tell you that. Yes. <laughs> the leaders of the industry are still, you know, from the old school. So that was kind of to do, you know, to switch things up a little bit. 
it, it definitely, I mean, look at all the tech that's coming into the space in the past couple of years and, you know, how, how much, you know, companies like Freight Waves has taken off uh, by just taking a different approach to what is a traditional industry. So there, there's definitely a lot of opportunity, um, especially from a video perspective, because all these platforms want people to produce video. And so when you can do it on a consistent basis, you're already light years ahead and, and helping your companies stand out on an organic level and over more of a long-term level than, you know, any kind of like paid advertising would do. I'm not saying, you know, even paid advertising is a bad thing to do, but I think you should start with the foundational stuff first. And then in the future, maybe, you know, six months, six, 12 months from now, then you can put some money behind the, behind those videos that are already performing well from an organic perspective, because if they're performing well organically, then they're likely going to perform even better with, you know, some money behind them. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that first of many to come AMA Ask Me Anything show series where I take questions from logistics companies struggling with what to do about their digital marketing and website strategy. Got a question you want me to answer? Head on over to our website by clicking the link in the show notes or by Google searching Digital Dispatch Podcast. And on that page, you'll be able to submit your question and I'll take a shot at answering it for you. Until next time, my name is Blythe Brimley, and I will see you real soon.